Okay, so uh, let's uh, talk a bit about this uh, fruit, dragon fruit. It is uh, becoming popular for two reasons. One, easy to grow. And second, the time between you are planting to you are harvesting is the shortest I have seen amongst most of the fruit trees. On an average, it is between uh, 18 to 24 months you get the fruits. So what is the success rate in general in this? Usually up to 90% is pretty much granted. And it is need good sunlight, lots of good sunlight. Yes. Two things. One, uh, it's a cactus. So naturally, by nature, it should not require too much of water. And it should be pretty good in withstanding heavy summer, uh, severe summer. But when practically you see, uh, it needs a little bit more water than normal cactus. And it can't always uh, survive in the severest of the heat. What will happen is, you can see these yellowing will start to happen. And when this yellowing starts to happen, the pulp inside will start to become, you know, actually, you know, the hard surface will start to become pulpy and it will break, ooze out. It's like, you know, we are getting some kind of a boil. So heat boils in our body is pretty common, right? <coughs> so once it breaks, it has a very high propensity for infection, which is when fungal infection or any other kind of things will happen. And because it is sweet, so ants and all kind of insects will start to go in. And that is where the problem starts to occur. So anyway, so those are the two things, which is a misnomer of a cactus versus dragon fruit. Uh, but then cactus also don't fruit. All cactuses don't fruit. This fruits a lot, a lot. And, uh, and one. And whenever these things happen, just remove those parts. Mm -hmm. We have done at so many places. Uh -huh. So then it becomes all right. Oh, okay. So this is something that you have kind of removed. Yes. Uh -huh. so you you cut it off yeah. with a knife or something. Yes. So it is uh, not amputation, but some kind of a surgery. Okay. Surgical <laughs> intervention. <laughs> okay. So we had to remove, remove scoop out that. that. And the main purpose of scooping out that is uh, don't have any infection or spread it. So then it, it becomes dries. soft and stays there, then it will... If it becomes soft and breaks, then it will get into infection. But some of them will be slightly soft, but not very soft. We leave it, and but keep watching. It will start to harden over a time. This typically happens when it's severe sun and in the night the temperature drops. So the temperature variation, I think, is the primary reason. Now, a lot of people say a lot of things about, you know, you can spray this clay, this ceramic clay, white, okay. so that uh, they learned from China, wherever, God knows, but then they spray that, so everything becomes totally white. Okay. So that can withstand a lot more heat. True. Uh, uh, it's a layer, it's you a know. Yeah, it's a membrane kind of a thing. So our logic was, yeah, people in Gujarat have acres and acres of uh, dragon fruit land and their summers are much more severe than yeah. Bangalore. How can their thing survive? None of them recommend this to be done. Why only Bangaloreans uh, being high tech always look at Vietnam and China and figure out why, why don't we do something like that? But we have not done it. Yes, there are sometimes few casualties here and there. But in overall sense, it works fine. There are some friends of ours who have tried some, one is called Green Miracle and few other things, seaweed and few other things. A mixed, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of thing. But one thing very clearly one can do, but it's laborious, you have 50% shade nuts, the green color shade nuts. So when it is severe uh, summer, you can just draw it up, but then you need the structure for that and you need that, all that. But, uh, correct. Because they get stuck to it, it's all heavy thorn. Is that 50% UV rating? UV rating, if you put for that duration of around the one month, one and a half months, it survives better. Even that we have not done. <laughs> okay, so keep it simple. So plant it, it grows. So Nature takes care. care. <laughs> is they come to your nursery, they take a cutting, right? Cut, <laughs> cut, 200 <laughs> bucks. <come back. laughs> then they uh, plug it in. At that point of time, it's probably like two or three feet long. Uh, yeah, it's okay. typically 15 inches to 18 inches okay. tall. And so, how do they prepare the soil? What do they need? Nothing. So, this is the best thing. We were talking earlier about the soil depth not being very high and rock 
being there at the beneath side so mangoes don't come several though mangoes are considered to be uh, in the rocky area comes well but it doesn't so dragon fruit has a very low penetration of fruits so this runs beautifully in any kind of a low soil depth area that's another key consideration now when you have to prepare you do nothing so basically even in situations that there is a rocky bed underneath it yes and on top of that if you have like at least a feet feet and a half correct it is you good to go so and then what you do is uh, you dig up the soil and naturally when you are planting the pole you have to dig up to 2 feet down if we have found some places where we find the rock we should have at least 1 feet depth and then we what we do is we place the pole and put cement around it to stick it to the rock so it may not have depth to hold the pole but because of uh, that uh, concrete it will hold then you put the you know soil over it at least 1 feet if you get soil how much okay so let's talk about for example so this one how much does the structure cost so uh, it used to cost close to around uh, 1200 bucks a few years back off late last year what we bought was around 5 600 rupees total Cost has reduced. Yeah. 50% has come out. Yeah. So that includes this, the pillar, as well as and that. The and the ring. And the ring. And the ring. So 600 bucks. The plant would cost, let's say, 200 bucks, right? No. Now it has also come down to around 100, 150, something. And like. uh, after that, you have to lay drip irrigation. You would correct. Correct. That, right? So the soil preparation is nothing but you mix the neem cake and uh, manure, uh, farmyard manure. Yeah. And then How much you of it just. Is what So one is to uh, one is one is to one, one, uh, one box of I mean uh, that um, oh, container one liter paint container. One That's our measure. Of one kg of uh, this uh, manure, of, of uh, uh, neem cake. Mix it and put it in the soil. That's good enough. Cake. That, that's awesome. Pongamia cake. Pongamia cake. cake. So. groundnut cake many of these things are there but we have generally used neem cake and pomegranate so, so you, you put that this. and then you uh, plant it there a time of the year in which you plant it october i for my uh, experience yeah i always see october is in this part in this part of the year see it should be neither too uh, cold nor too hot nor too rainy So when you have to pick a month like that, typically September to the really rainy season, extreme like climates are better. I mean, I planted in July. Some died eventually. Hundred percent uh, mortality. <laughs> Another key thing is you don't put it deep inside the uh, soil. It should not be more than half an inch to one inch. Oh, that's, that's all. That's all. And then you tie it so that it cannot. It, if you push it too hard inside. It may not survive. It's better to tie it with a thread than yeah. don't use like a CIY wire and. No, 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 no don't. Some people use ribbon, which is a somewhat better option. But when you are tying with a thread, it might uh, cut through this. Mm. So you need to typically put it in the hard areas. This is oh. the nerve system of it, and that is the muscles. <laughs> so then you plant it, and after that, so how frequently do you water it? So uh, usually uh, twice a week. Twice a week. During winter maybe once. During rainy season uh, none. Not at all. And uh, what nutrients etc. do you need to provide it? Only uh, farmyard manure, neem cake. And how frequently do you do that? So you have planted it after that next application. Typically three applications. Right? Like every three months or so, you would basically. Yes. but there is also hibernation period between uh, november to march november to march we don't we do it plant it in october yeah. november to march don't do anything let yeah. it be just uh, water it as long as it's not raining just water it twice a week and uh, march june and uh, september fertigation is march uh, september september 3 Three three month cycle we just and it is only because that is the time when it is going to bud flower bud fruit formation. So just before flowering, yes, you kind of give it a little yes. look. And in so between the fruiting time, yeah, the same thing. So this is the manure, and this nothing else is needed. 
Nothing. Plain groundwater through the drip, and uh, this is only that. So, actually speaking, <coughs> this plant is so suitable for organic, organic farming because it really doesn't need anything other than that. Yes, for having said that, you may get fungal disease, you may get uh, some kind of uh, insect, and these kind of, but insects typically happen after the fungal disease because they crack. So, fungal so, disease is something that you need to catch. As quickly as possible. As quickly right? as possible. Correct. The Ca removing, uh, scooping it out. And anything else that you should Yeah. So out. you spray two kind of things. Either this uh, Bordex mixture, Bordex which is right. uh, yeah, which is basically copper-based uh, fungicide. It's allowed in uh, organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is allowed. So is a copper, sulfur. Some of these are allowed. So you use that, and you use neem oil. Neem oil typically, when you see more insects attacking it because uh, neem oil has a propensity to block the oxygen to the larva and others so they die so there is no propagation of this insect once a month once a month neem oil anyway it doesn't uh, it's a best repellent then yes. yes correct and, and in case cases, it has a problem you also put in those fruit fly traps as well yes. oh that is a must One. otherwise uh, you get the fruit flies penetrate into, into the, fruit, the fruit and you will not notice it until it has reached the client <laughs> then only you see them. Unfortunately, everybody believes and that you know we have sold them the bad thing. But actually, you inspect all around, you won't find anything. And you know, once you cut, and that fruit will be the sweetest and more juicy. Actually, that is also true. We become very happy when customers become very angry and we put one of those because that's also actually another test that this orchard is organic. If there are absolutely no complaints, no complaints about yeah. and that orchard had sold 5 tons to us, correct. then we have become very worried. But, then yeah. we might send it to a residue test. Correct, yes, correct, correct. Kuch to gavar. Right? Absolutely. So, like, they attack all crops in India. All crops correct. in India. Right? So, and, and you know, typically we are seeing there are some uh, dragon fruits especially, there are some black spots. So we say oh, this must have fruit fly into it. So we keep it aside and uh, we wait for a few days. Nothing happened. It doesn't ooze out anything. Then when we cut, you say it's damn it. It's only superficial. So it must have been some thorn prick or something. <laughs> Nothing other than that. And then there will be smooth, no uh, aberrations at all. Right. And there will be complaints that we found worms inside. Right. Oh God. <laughs> The only way to really prevent it is to do like those hardcore chemical stuff. Correct, so correct. Ah, yeah. so, Which is not fair. And again, we say, see, end of the day, these worms come in cauliflowers. You see cauliflowers, you get these worms. And anything, mango. So sometimes we say, when the birds are eating the fruit, is the indication the that it is the sweetest. That's, those are the organic inspectors visiting <laughs> yeah, right, the farm every day. Right, yes. right. If they are yeah. not eating it, then there's some problem. Some with problem. So fruit yeah. flies also attack ones which are very sweet in nature. So, yeah, so we generally have also tried to scoop out the place where because it gives a very odd feeling to eat them. So you take it out, but rest of the thing is very sweet. So, this is also very true in mangoes, at least in Banganapalli, we have yeah, seen yeah. that a lot. Correct. Because I don't know the name of the insect. It is this black color insect. Okay, it will go inside it. Will so the other thing is now after it has started to grow, you need to have the ring pretty soon installed. So usually it takes around four months for it to start from there to come to this height. So you can avoid on that initial investment until your plants are oh, that's close a, to that place. Because many people feel, oh my God, I have to. But these days, these guys are also smart. When they sell it in sets, they give you a better discount <laughs> than you buy it individually. So what so, is the funda? Why do you put the rings? I mean, I see that it kind of makes the plant spread out like this. Correct. Yeah. So one is spreading out. So a single uh, stem which is going up, multiplies into multiple uh, you know steps so that will get you more opportunity to have more fruits one second this has a propensity of growing when it is more gravity pulled scenario that is where fruiting generally happens because having said that you may also at times find some fruits here there somewhere but most of the fruits will be on the hanging side of the plant now, this seems to be the nature of dragon fruit. Uh, I don't know beyond that what, how to explain. These are all uh, last year's 
oh, harvested okay. part. So you find these kind of things there. Okay, the other thing which we see is once the buds start to form, they form very fast. Okay. And from buds to fruits, to flowers and to fruits right. happens within two weeks, okay. right? Typically. More than two weeks. So in some somewhere, in that, but the point I'm trying to say is we miss out on looking at the buds and removing them. That is, I was telling you earlier about on each of these stems, you leave typically three to four, don't leave more than that. Now there is naturally a heart filled feeling. Oh, I'm killing the buds. Yeah, they will all grow into fruits. But the thing is, it's a trade off between you get a better size or you get you more size. Three or four in one typically, of the branches. One of the branches. That too depends on thickness of the branch. The branch is sturdy. It can hold and it four. And probably give a little bit of gap. Let's gap. say there are yes. in them so, so that the correct. fruit can grow in. Yeah. So like don't this, pluck like, both of yeah. them. Like this is a mistake. Ah, okay. And I'll tell you why this is a mistake. Hmm. Now this is not intentional mistake. What, what happens is when you have so many plants, so many buds, different stages, my two helpers are running helter-skelter everywhere. <laughs> trying to see, okay, this you leave, this you pluck, this you leave, this you pluck, this you leave. Like that, they, when they're going each stem by stem and each plant may have up to around 100 odd buds. So they will naturally miss out. And once it becomes a fruit this size, you don't feel like right. them. <laughs> well, yeah, it has already crossed that boundary of infant mortality. So let's leave it. That's all. It, 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 it just grows well. <laughs>